All right, Free Radicals, uh, welcome back. I'm just a guy. My name is Dave, and I do this thing called the Radical Independent. Uh, I am not a professional political pundit. I am just somebody who makes observations and then, you know, talks about it. So last night was a cluster F uh, at the Iowa caucuses. I'm trying to keep the uh, show um, somewhat clean. Hey, look, folks, one thing about progressives and progressive commentators is apparently they don't want anybody like 12 years old or 10 years old watching what they do. And here's why I want to nitpick here for a second, because this is the future of the country. You have to get young people involved in politics so they understand that um, we've got major problems. And I don't appreciate, you know, like the the bathroom talk or the slang or any. It just if you're gonna overcome this mainstream media logjam, where these corporate networks just, you know, they sound professional, obviously, but they don't know what they're talking about. Whereas most of the independent commentators um, know what they're talking about, but sound like morons. All right, I'm just throwing it in there. I mean, I'm not always the most articulate guy, but, you know, um, buy, a, buy a thesaurus. You know, look look up some words and try them out. Anyway, uh, Iowa caucus delays revive concerns and conspiracy theories among Bernie Sanders supporters. Now, as you know, I'm a Tulsi Gabbard supporter. And I have said off and on that if I have to take Bernie... I might vote for him, depending, uh, again, on if he wins. It's a lot of things. Who he picks as the VP. Does he go neoliberal with a vice president? Because at that point, it's over. It's over. And there are going to be some people that just don't vote, or they go back to Trump, or they look for someone to bail us out from the Green Party. All right? And those are your options. So in Des Moines... Now, Bernie's got results, and he's got stats, and he says he's uh, he's the winner. And the whole thing does smell of a conspiracy. I, of course, um, cannot immediately sign on to the conspiracy, but uh, I did not stay up last night. In fact, there was a progressive channel that was looking to talk with me, and unfortunately, uh, we never coordinated, and I was fast asleep. I was not going to... Uh, stay up for this cluster F, okay? Because that's what it is, and that's what it still is. Um, you know, the banana republics, they're starting to look a lot more professional than the American voting system. Next time you say, well, America's turning into a, a banana republic, say, no, no, the banana republics are way more organized, and there's probably less corruption. So I don't know if that analogy uh, works anymore. So anyway, while the political world waited late Monday to get results, um, the Washington Examiner overheard several field organizers for the Vermont senator complaining that supporters of rival candidates were conspiring to block them from winning delegates. Uh, I don't know how much more out in the open the rigging has to be. And look, even if you don't like Bernie, you think he's going to sell out, you think he's going to cave, um, which he could and he could, um, they are so crazy against him. And that makes me like him, all right? Even though there are times where uh, he says, yeah, and, you know, and he capitulates and he says, oh, yeah, any blue will do at one of his rallies the other day. And this is what they're doing to him. Bernie, any blue won't do. Knock it off, dude. Be more like Tulsi Gabbard. By the way, he's not going to pick Tulsi Gabbard. No way. He's, he's just not going to do it. He is going to continue to kowtow to the establishment to try to make peace with them, even though they're out in the open, apparently, here in Iowa, ripping off delegates saying, yeah, no, we're gonna we're gonna block 
you guys from winning the delegates. We we see you're winning, and we're going to stop it. We notice that you're ahead. This is so Debbie Watzerman Schultz. Um, ballots in the trunk of a car being driven away, replaced by the correct ballots, right? The ones that the DNC wants to count, not the ones the people cast. Anyway, I guess I shouldn't have left after all, one male organizer said to a woman. I don't understand what was going on. All the other supporters seem to be against us, she responded. You know, there are people, and this is uh, my friend Jess, who had a nice long conversation with yesterday, really nice lady, um, dedicated Tulsi Gabbard supporter. Uh, in New Hampshire, there are people driving around. They're not targeting any other signage except the signage for Tulsi Gabbard. It's a well-known fact. They're not going after Bernie signs. They're not going after Biden signs, obviously. They're going after Tulsi Gabbard signs. All right. And um, Jess's husband did a video on this. And you could tell the look in his eyes. He's like heartbroken and angry. Like, what's going on? What happened to freedom of speech? Posting a sign uh, is freedom of speech. In the lead up to the caucuses, the Sanders campaign was instructing voters to leave after the first round. Supporters of Sanders began flocking in immediately after caucus locations closed, all with the same complaint, that precinct leaders and other campaigns were conspiring against their candidate. One woman who spoke with the Washington Examiner on the condition of anonymity, of course, <laughs> said the precinct captain at her location in Des Moines was biased against Sanders and allowed supporters of former South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg to vandalize their signs. Folks, th these people don't understand what they're doing. I went on Twitter the other day and I've been preaching against violence. I, I say, please, just don't don't threaten people. Don't say you're going to blow stuff up. Don't do it. Don't do it. Practice Gandhi. Practice Martin Luther King. Practice Jesus. Okay? Do, do that. Try to do that. But when I read stuff like this, I don't say people should go out and get angry and start destroying property and so forth. But... There's motive. As, as they say in the crime business, there's motive. All right? And when you vandalize signs of the only candidate, well, other than Tulsi, and we're not even sure 100% that Bernie is aligned, that he may just go and be a neoliberal at the end of the day. All right? But the only candidate that offers maybe a shred of hope for some folks, you vandalize his stuff and his supporters... The ones that have been sticking around now for, I don't know, five, six years, maybe more. Um, you're, you're basically trying to, um, you're lighting a power, powder cake. Sorry. Sorry, I couldn't get that out there. I'm just afraid to say it. I'm afraid to say it because I don't want to encourage it. But when the news headlines start coming in, when they deny Sanders the nomination, the kind of stuff that might happen, I mean, what's that, Project Veritas, that right-leaning outfit that goes undercover, um, they talked to some Bernie people in the campaign, and these people are basically thinking to themselves, if you steal it again, we're not just going to sit idly by. So, this does a couple of things. Number one, it will marginalize Sanders as soon as this starts to happen. That he won't be able to control people. He, he, he doesn't speak to his supporters very well sometimes. He doesn't, in other words, he doesn't transmit this idea like Tulsi Gabbard says, Aloha, we're tough, but we still, at the end of the day, we practice Aloha. And that's a difference between Bernie and Tulsi supporters. The Tulsi supporters understand that we need to appeal to our higher angels, all right, but our better angels. But somewhere along the line, if you continue to torture people and say your vote doesn't count, because it's like a form of psychological torture. You did all this work here at the primary, 
the caucus is, sorry, doesn't matter. We're going to deface your stuff, and we're going to block your candidate from winning. This is what's happening. When it was our turn to give a speech, the Buttigieg supporters kept interrupting us, and the campaign didn't do anything, meaning the Bernie campaign. See, this is, this is rough, because I think you need to have a leader out there, and Bernie Sanders not being, really not being the natural-born leader. All right, he's great with amendments, and you could say he's been consistent, and I agree with all that stuff. But leadership requires boldness when it's appropriate. This is how Donald Trump won, by the way. People wonder, how, how the heck did he win? He ran a business, okay? And even if you say he was the worst businessman, he went bankrupt a hundred times, and he's a charlatan and a TV uh, evangelist, and you come up with all these different things about him, Trump kicked butt when it was time to kick butt, and he flattened out the field over there and rolled to victory because of that, at least in the primaries. And then he kind of did the same thing in the general. He said, I don't really care what happens. I'm just doing what I'm going to do. And I think that attitude, I think, exemplifies what Tulsi Gabbard is all about. It certainly exemplifies a guy like Bloomberg or a guy like Buttigieg or any of these neoliberals who basically think that the world owes them this because of who they are. And, you know, what college they went to and how good they can gentrify a city. Both Bloomberg and Buttigieg in, involved in that stuff. Not about how you relate to people, how you connect to people. None of that. So the night caps a series of complaints going back to the 2016 campaign when Sanders, 78, they put his age in there, make sure you know he's old, lost the Democratic nomination to Hillary Clinton, 73, right? Something like that, Hillary. Sanders backers also raised questions about the counting procedures of the Iowa caucuses that led to Clinton's razor. I can't imagine Hillary Clinton winning the Iowa caucus ever. But it was 49.84% to 49.59%. Not like a couple of votes, maybe? Literally? The Des Moines Register, after that election, called for a review of the caucus process. Okay, my first thoughts when I woke up. Get rid of it. It's done. It's over. It's toast. It needs to. It's a relic. I don't care how traditional it is and in the past how interesting it was to see people all caucusing together. I want my vote to count. I don't want to be influenced when I walk into a room by other people, what I want is to cast a ballot, to do the research on my own, maybe sit in my my own home, right in front of my computer screen, cast that vote, and have a paper uh, verification generated that goes to the Board of Elections and goes to me. So there's basically two backups of how I voted. And we should all be able to Look online and see, um, you know, at a certain point when it's over, the vote tallies. And the vote tallies, I don't know, they'd be instantaneous, right? Because if it's all recorded electronically. And I know there's a danger of hacking and so forth. There's all kinds of dangers. Or we could just go back to the old-fashioned way where you got a paper ballot, filled in the oval, put it in a box, and then have people who are nonpartisan paid... Pay them to count the votes, all right? And have them start counting. All right, this vote's been counted. You put it over here. And you have people supervising that process. Folks, not a lot of people vote compared to how many people there are who just don't do anything. They don't vote. They don't participate. So you could probably hire a few of those people and say, hey, here's a, we're helping the economy here, and you need to count these votes. Be accurate and uh, have maybe a double checker. I mean, there's a way to do this. I don't know. No way is perfect, but there are better methods to do this. Too many accounts have arisen of inconsistent counts, untrained and overwhelmed volunteers. That's because they're volunteers. Okay, the DNC raking in the dough. 
hey, Mike Bloomberg, hey, Tom Steyer, hey, you want to help pay for this? Since you got deep pockets, and you basically bought yourself into this? There's got to be a way. There's got to be a way to do this. Um, the DNC could do fundraisers and say, look, we need to hire qualified people so the Russians don't hack in. Because that'll be their, their modus operandi. They'll say, well, you know, this is probably Russia last night, and uh, if we had better volunteers, we could have seen the Russian hacking coming. <sighs> Confused voters, cramped precinct locations, a lack of voter registration forms, and other problems. Imagine this is, remember, this is the team that has to defeat Donald Trump. They have to beat him. But yet they're beating themselves. Trump last night tweeted out a couple of things. I'll tell you what, I don't like Trump anymore, but I almost kind of laugh with him when he says stuff sometimes. Because, you know, in his stupid Neanderthal way, he ends up being right. These people are idiots. They can't get out of their own way. They're morons. What a joke. How are they going to beat me if they can't even uh, conduct a primary? Folks, they're just teeing this up for Trump for four more years. Because they want to do four more years of impeachment, four more years of recounts, four more years of Russia Gate and Ukraine Gate and anything else that they can get their, you know, their warped brains around just to keep the country in paralysis so people don't talk about issues. Last night basically um, illustrates the systemic failure of the entire system. Okay, it's a breakdown. It's a huge breakdown. And the chaos now is going to throw the entire primary into um, chaos. It's people are going to doubt the results of everything now. People are going to suspect Russia. Anytime Bernie does well, people are going to say, well, see, Russia, they're involved in this very early on, and we know their candidate of choice is Bernie Sanders. And if Tulsi Gabbard does well in New Hampshire, see, well, it's got to be the Russians, because nobody likes Bernie and nobody likes Tulsi, right? According to Hillary Clinton... Nobody likes Bernie, and the other one is, a, you know, a spy for the, the Russian government. In any event, folks, um, we need, I keep saying this, my, my conclusion here, and it has been for quite some time, is we need a way around. We need a workaround. We need some other method uh, that will actually be democracy. Because right now we don't have democracy. We don't have any kind of direct democracy. We have democracy that's bought and paid for by large corporations that influence uh, candidates like Buttigieg who know that working people are upset, but yet he still wants to pal around with the billionaire class and he still wants to prop up Wall Street and he still wants the war machine to run at full speed. He hates Trump. He just wants to run the war machine. Okay, little... Mayor Pete. If you want to put a nickname on him, it would be Little Mayor Pete. And um, I, I'm, you could see why people just quit. You know, Jess and her husband, the ones I talked about at the beginning of this video, why should they be involved in this anymore? Because there's, there was no way. I was saying six months ago, hey, Tulsi, I love you, but tell me how this is going to work. How are you going to fight this corruption? How are you going to beat your own party? Because the sickness, the rot, as it's called, the systemic rot within the Democratic Party, it's too pervasive. Uh, and, and these DSA people that are trying to infect it and change it, well, you're getting pushback hard. And it comes in the form of lying and cheating and stealing. This is the worst of who we are. And it's all about wrestling power away from a group of people that are not concerned about the average person in the world. And I mean that all across the world. They're not concerned. I mean, is this a, a grand conspiracy? No, this is right out in the open. Anyway, folks, if you can support the channel, please do so. Uh, I need support. David J. Spuria at gmx.com. 
for one-time PayPal donations. Uh, pretty easy to send money via PayPal uh, through your email. Uh, there's also a link on my YouTube channel for Patreon. That account is shared with my music channel platform. Please don't be afraid of that. Uh, music is my other passion. It's the thing I care about, and I've been doing that channel for quite a while. I want to continue to do both channels, and I want both channels to be successful. So if you can help me out either way, it would be much appreciated. You can give like a buck, two bucks a month. Plus, you can send me messages over there, and we can have conversations. In any event, we're going to be talking about this because, again, to me, this looks like the beginning of complete anarchy. That's what it looks like, and that's what I was hinting around about when I said that even though I preach peace, and I believe in peace both here at home and abroad if possible, because we don't need to be in endless wars, um, I, I fear for my country because I see the, the turmoil bubbling under when the oligarchs and the people at the top look down upon people and pretend they don't exist and then erase their existence because they erase the candidate that they love, like Tulsa Gabbard. Or they somehow just say, no, Bernie, you're not having this. We, you're, you can't win. There's just no way you can win. Uh, we played this game for a while. We see your poll numbers, but you're you're done. It's either going to be Biden, the Buddha judge, or um, Mayor uh, not Mayor Pete Tom Steyer or Michael Bloomberg. That's what it's going to be. Maybe Amy Klobuchar. She's all fired up now. In any event, long video. If you stuck with it, thanks for watching. I will talk to you soon. Don't forget to check me out also over on Rockfin. All right. Have a good day, everybody.